Hi, this is Paul Haar from the saxophonist.org, and I'm here with a play test and review of the Florida Anniversary Model saxophone mouthpiece from Autolink. The name Autolink is as much a part of jazz saxophone history as the myriad of players who became famous playing these iconic mouthpieces. Players such as... Okay, so I wanted to show you two mouthpieces that were sent to me by my friends at Tenor Madness Saxophone Shop. Um, ten, if you're not familiar with Tenor Madness, one of the great saxophone shops in the country, if not the world, uh, out of Waterloo, Iowa, just go to tenormadness.com and you'll check out their great selection of instruments, reeds, mouthpieces, etc. They were kind enough to send me both a 7 and a 7 star. As you can see here, there is the patented iconic Auto Link box. Uh, these are selling for roughly uh, 285 bucks. I've seen it online about the same price, a little higher other places. Um, under 300 bucks, which is affordable by today's standards, but it's still a chunk of change. Okay, so these are the Florida Anniversary. The first thing that you'll notice is that it has a plastic cap. Now, there's good and bad to this. Gone are the days where you slam your cap on your mouthpiece and that burr on the inside uh, of the cap slams into the tip and bends it okay also that uh, horrific metallic tang is now replaced by a gentle plastic thud uh, I don't necessarily like the patina I mean yes I appreciate the ridge that now fits the the cap uh, fits the mouthpiece a little bit better but it looks like something that I spray painted in my garage again it's a cap it's not that big a deal um, whatever but let me show you some things that I did notice about the mouthpieces, which I think are a little odd. Okay, first of all, we see the patented single screw ligatures, okay? Everybody who's ever played an Autolink knows that these things can be heaven or they can be hell. If they fit well and they help the reed vibrate, you just want to keep them. And if they don't, you want to throw them at somebody. Well, if we look at this ligature, it generally fits, with the exception here. Let's move his friend out of the way here. Get a little bit clearer picture. There's some major gaps, and it doesn't fit very cleanly up here on the top. But if you think that's bad, check out this one. The gaps are gone, but there's a big dent in the side of it. Here, let me hold it over here so you can see. Look at that. Now, does that make a difference? No, it's still going to hold the reed on. But my thought is, why should there be damage for something that I just got fresh out of the box? Um, it has... Let's take those two off. It has the sizes on the side. The serial numbering that is found on those old mouthpieces. The FL in the USA, the FL standing for the Florida model and the Super Tone Master and Autolink insignias. Now, I thought it was interesting that on this mouthpiece, right here, let's get a little closer, you can see that it looks like some of the plating is already starting to come off. Now, this would be pretty much in line with what you experienced with the original Florida uh, links, whose plating was so bad that most of them that you find today are silver because the original gold plating came off and the nickel silver underneath is what you find. Um, the bite plate is long. Here on this one, you can see the seam. These mouthpieces are made in halves and then put together or seamed together. You can actually see the plating on this one. Uh, you can see the seam a little bit easier. The rails and tip are wildly inconsistent. These are fat. This is very thin. I will tell you that when I was looking at these mouthpieces, everything said auto link to me, but something just seemed a little strange. And maybe you can notice it if I put it in front of the, it's not camera angle. If you look at this one in particular, the bite plate 
and the design of the mouthpiece is askew. Looky here, it is thinner on, now somebody will say, well, that's, that's camera angle. No, it's taller on this side than it is on that side. And in fact, if I put a ruler next to it, you can see it's almost a millimeter and a half difference. Now, will that affect the playability? We'll find out. But I have to tell you, that doesn't instill me with a lot of confidence when the company that's supposed to have written the book about Autolink mouthpieces has got something that's so inexact. Another thing that's really inexact is right here. If I tilt the mouthpiece, you could see that patented thumbprint type baffle. Well, if you notice, it doesn't seem like it's very uniform. In fact, it's more uniform than this one is. You can see here that it's much smaller here than on that side. Now, that might be the result of handwork, or it could be the fact that it makes no difference in playability at all. But these are little things that um, bother me because, you know, a typical uh, link copy is going to run you five to six hundred dollars. So this at just a little under three is a little less than half. But I, you know, two hundred and forty-eight dollars is, is nothing to sneeze at. Also, the little details, like still being able to see the seam work on this one, seeing some issues with the plating, those are little details that, that kind of say to me that maybe um, not 100% effort is being put into the final product. But let's see if this is still the choice of the world's greatest artists. Let's play it out and let's see how they play. family finally decided to get out of the restaurant business after 65 years. On the final day of it being open, I decided to go to the old building and walk through every room. 
I walk through the kitchen, the bathrooms, the closets, the coat closet, the bar, and I stood for a moment in each and looked around and breathed in the smell of the old building. And I came to the conclusion at the end that it was time, that our best years as a business were behind us and the old building had really just outlived its time and it was time for a new, more modern restaurant to come out. Uh, I recall that story because that seems to be the nostalgic feeling that I have in trying these Autolink mouthpieces. As I said at the introduction of this video, Autolink is synonymous with jazz saxophone history. And everybody that I ever grew up loving had a picture taken with the iconic Autolink shape. Here's what I could say. I'm not a real big fan of any company who decides to create a reference or a retro version of their own product. The first thing that comes to mind is, why did you stop making the quality product from your past? Why is it necessary to bring it back because of probably lost sales and popular demand? This mouthpiece, I can tell you right now, does not play anything like any Florida Autolink I've ever played. And I probably played about 20 or 30 of them, and uh, certainly not as many as some people out there, but enough to know that this is sadly like other nostalgic copies uh, from the manufacturer just misses the mark and I'm sorry to say that. Yes, both of them played fine. I felt a disconnect with each one. I felt that they were heavy. I could not feel vibration in my mouth, the reed vibrating, which was very strange. Um, they felt very dull and unresponsive to me, again, in my head. That might translate as something different out to the audience, but I think it's one is aware you have to be really, um, the feedback has to be such that you're aware of the different colors that you can make. And I felt like I was locked into one sound. The seven star did perform a little bit better than the seven, uh, was a little bit darker. I could not use one of the ligatures. Uh, it was bent so badly, again, from the factory that I had to use the same ligature on both mouthpieces, which performed vastly different as you would expect. Um, Overall, I think this is a average mouthpiece at best. I can't even say good. Uh, at near $300, which is not chump change to a lot of people, especially in this economy, um, you want a mouthpiece that's going to constantly deliver, hold up in construction, uh, use a variety of reeds so you're not having to dig through boxes and boxes to find the one that might work. And I, that's where I'd have to say this was most reminiscent of an old Autolink. I went through probably three or four boxes of ultimately the Diodario too hard. I had to find much softer reeds to work on these mouthpieces. And I would say out of 10, I found two that would work. And then you're always dealing with how long will they work. Um, the tone it produced, I'm sure, is pleasing. Um, I think in the hands of somebody who doesn't know how to play a mouthpiece the right way, they're going to find great frustration. And if you think um, that you're going to be getting that characteristic Autolink sound without your own manipulation, you're not going to find it. I was disappointed to see some of the design imperfections. I mean, we're all human, and yes, I'm sure these are probably... I, I, I don't know if they're handmade. I doubt it. I imagine that there's some portion that's still... Um, touch, but to see seams, to see um, misshapen bite plates, to see ligatures that don't fit, those things, I keep thinking, what am I buying for $300? Especially when there are other mouthpieces out on the market. Um, yes, you're probably going to pay double if you're going to get a Retro Revival or a Marantz, but you're going to get 10 times the mouthpiece, something that really, truly feels nostalgic, um, or even better than the original. Ultimately, I don't know that I could recommend this mouthpiece. I mean, it's too expensive for it to be worth the money, and um, it just didn't perform well enough for me to, um, to feel that this was worthy of that Autolink name, and that's really difficult for me to say because um, uh, it's such an iconic brand, but I think maybe if this is indicative of, of what a modern Autolink is, perhaps the days uh, of glory are behind them. And that's that's really tough for me to say. But you know, it reminds me of something. We have individual mouthpiece makers, uh, boutique makers as we would say, who are using CAD design, who are using 3D printing to really hone their product, 
they're investing tremendous sums of money into making really well-crafted mouthpieces. I question why isn't uh, the Autolink company or the Babbitt company doing that with these? It's clear that they're not. And uh, that saddens me because I really think who would know better um, what it takes to be a great Florida Autolink than the company with the name Autolink. But sadly, um, not all play tests work out. I know a lot of people who have tried some of these and felt that they're not too bad to each his own. My experience was a little bit different. To learn more about this mouthpiece, other mouthpieces, as well as interviews, reviews, and educational features, be sure to go to www.thesaxphonist.org.